Hey, hey. Uh, so I wanted to do a video to show some of the GPT-3 chatbot uh, game prototypes that we made last year. So this is all prototypes that we made in Modbox, a very old version of Modbox uh, that we made before uh, OpenAI decided to disallow any create your own chatbot applications, which is exactly what we were doing. So they added this after we made our initial demo and uh, a few of these prototypes. Um, so the first prototype I'll be showing is uh, this NPC shopkeeper. So this is uh, the idea here is that uh, the player could come into a shop, talk to this AI about items in the shop, and just naturally ask it questions about items in the shop. So I could walk up to the sword and ask the NPC, um, ask the AI questions about that sword. So what we have here, if you didn't see my last video, the way that this works is uh, um, there's a prompt on this character which sets how it should actually talk to the player, what it kind of knows, its backstory, and any and any answers to questions the player might ask. Uh, so this guy is a mysterious NPC shopkeeper. I added the word mysterious there because it just kind of adds a little bit of flavor to it sometimes. Uh, but then it, it just knows about these items and these prices, pretty basic prompt. And then what this does is after it gets the player's response, it uh, then sends it to GPT-3 servers and OpenAI and gets the shopkeeper's uh, response. So what we want to try here was the idea that um, we wanted to try changing the shopkeeper's prompt based on the context of what the player is doing. So if the player walks up to the sword and picks up the sword, it then changes the prompt of this, uh, of the AI, based on what's set in the sword. So the idea is that I could walk up to your sword in the shop, pick it up, and just ask, what's this? And the AI could respond what it is. And in that way, it would say, he would say it was a broken sword of light, and I could ask something like, well, what kind of effects does it, does it have? What's its history? I could ask it natural questions about the item in the shop just based on holding it. Or I can even just ask, how much does it cost? Uh, so for this prototype, we're also showing what the prompt uh, currently is on this screen, just so you can see it while I'm in VR. And uh, yeah, all four of these items have different prompts. So yeah, I'll go into VR and try it out. Hey, shopkeeper. What do you need? Uh, what's your cheapest item? The cheapest item I have for sale is the sword. It costs 10 coins. And what's this? This is an orc battle mace. It's a powerful weapon favored by orcs. It has a one penalty to armor class. But it's a martial weapon for orcs and half orcs. It costs 20 gold coins. And how much is this axe? The axe is 30 gold coins. Uh, what does it do? The axe is a powerful weapon that gives the player a plus one bonus to attack and damage rolls. However, the axe is cursed, and holding it extends the curse to the player. Health will slowly decay when the player is cursed, until they die or are helped by a powerful mage. Uh, can I have this shield for free? You can have the shield for free if you dance for me. Uh, what kind of dance do you want me to do? I don't really have a specific dance in mind. Just show me your best moves. Uh, do you know how to square dance? No, I don't know how to square dance. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Just show me your best moves, and we'll see if it's good enough. Ah, uh, goodbye. All right. so for this prototype, we wanted to try what it would be like to have an AI assistant that would follow you around in an open world game. That you could actually talk to and ask questions about the game and uh, whatever you're doing. So uh, this this guy, this dude with the smiley face, he would follow me around and then I could turn to him, ask him questions about my current quest, where I should go next, what's this item in my hand, that sort of thing. Uh, so this guy is named uh, Jarvis and he responds to, hey Jarvis, and then I can ask him the questions. So unlike um, the other chatbots, he doesn't keep talking to me, he just answers my questions and then stops and he uh, continually gets updated based on what's happening in the world. So it's a pretty small prompt to start, just that I'm in the town of Deadwood and some information on my quest to go to the bank. Uh, and then once I enter, get close to the bank, it updates that prompt with information about the bank. So it says, they'll, it'll show the prompt on the screen when I go into it on uh, in the video, but once I get close to the bank, it'll update and it'll give me uh, the AI assistant information about who's that guy on top of the bank and then how do I get in there? And then when I go close to the trading post, it'll also update this AI assistant with information on that. So the idea is, is that I could walk around the world 
and then just um, ask the assistant questions about it based on what's happening. This is especially good in VR because I don't really want to have a ton of UI in a VR game. I want to feel like I'm immersed in the world. And uh, if I have to constantly update the player what his next quest is with uh, UI, that would be terrible. So this is that I can just ask uh, my assistant questions about my next quest. So uh, yeah, I'll go into VR to try it out. Hey Jervis. Uh, where am I and what do I do? You are in the town of Deadwood. Your quest is to use the key to enter the safe in the back of the bank. Hey Jervis. Uh, where is the bank? The bank is located in the center of town. Hey Jarvis. Who is that guy up there? That is the guard at the top of the bank. You will need to get a weapon from the trading post in order to take him down. Hey Jarvis. How do I get a weapon? You can get a weapon by talking to the sheriff at the trading post. He will give you a gun to use. Uh, hey sheriff. What do you want? Alright, so this one's a pretty simple idea. Uh, I wanted to, sh to try out having multiple characters to talk to in a game. So this is one dialogue, but multiple uh, AI responding to my questions. So I thought the best use of that was trying to make the characters very distinct, but simple. So this is a good cop, bad cop, with the idea that um, the bad cop gives me aggressive answers, the good cop is trying to be really friendly to me. And uh, so this starts out that I am um, in conversation with these two detectives, and I had just, uh, I'm suspected of robbing a convenience store. So I talk to uh, the bad cop, and then it switches to good cop, and then every time I respond, it switches characters to give a response. So hopefully, uh, the good cop should give responses that are very helpful, and the bad cop should be a little bit of a jerk to me. So yeah, I'll try that out. All right, tell us exactly what happened, or you'll end up in jail. Uh, I don't know anything about a robbery. It's okay. We just want to know what happened. You're not in any trouble. We just need to get some information. Uh, what will happen to me? You'll go to jail if you don't tell us what happened. Uh, I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to... It's okay. Just tell us what happened and we can help you. Uh, you don't believe me? No. I don't believe you. I think you're lying and I think you know more than you're letting on. Uh, can I go? No, you can't go. You need to tell us what happened. Why are you pointing a gun at me? I'm not pointing a gun at you. But if you don't stop cooperating, I will. Now, what happened? Alright, so for this prototype, we're using the Uber Duck text-to-speech service. So this is a text-to-speech service that lets you uh, choose a voice that's a fictional character, a popular celebrity, that sort of thing, so it actually sounds like them. Uh, so the idea here is that we could have games where you talk to characters from fictional properties or talk to celebrities, and they would have a prompt set up so that you can actually ask them questions about, um, uh, ask them actual questions. So this is set up to be Marge Simpson from The Simpsons. I could ask her questions about Homer Simpson. I could ask her any questions about Simpsons episodes and uh, she should be able to respond to them uh, using her actual voice or a rough estimate. So I'm, this is using UberDuck and I can search for any voice on UberDuck. Uh, I'll go Marge Simpson. I went with Marge Simpson just because that, that's the model that I had. Um, and it, uh, yeah, I'll, it's it's pretty rough voice. It, there's a, like using UberDuck, there's a little bit of a delay and it uh, gives some weird results sometimes, but it's a prototype.
So yeah, I'll try it out. Hey, Merge. Hello, Eva Mealin. Uh, who are you married to? I'm married to Homer Simpson. Uh, can you describe Homer Simpson? Homer Simpson is a big, tall man with a bald head and a hairy appetite. He's not the brightest guy in the world. All right, so for another test of the Uber Duck service, I want to try a, a historical or a celebrity voice that you could actually ask questions and get real life information from. So it could be a bit educational in that way. I could have Benjamin Franklin there and talk to Benjamin Franklin, and then this prompt could be set up to give responses based on that. So uh, the first model that I found online was this absolutely terrible Elon Musk uh, model. And then uh, Uber Duck has Elon Musk, a bunch of Elon Musk voices. So I went with that and it's set up to, uh, that he's talking to a journalist. So you could ask you questions about any of the companies, rockets, that sort of thing. Uh, so yeah, I'll try it out. Hey, Elon. Hello, Abramillion. Hello, Abramillion. Uh, who are you and what do you do? Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, the Boring Company, and they're like, the Boring Company, in don't know. What's the Boring Company? The Boring Company is a tunnel construction company that I founded in 2016. We were working on developing technology to build tunnels more efficiently and cheaply in order to alleviate traffic congestion. Um, what's wrong with traffic? Traffic is a major problem in many cities, as it can cause delays and frustration for commuters. By developing technology to build tunnels more efficiently, we help to reduce traffic congestion. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Okay, so for this test, what I wanted to do is see if I could use GPT-3 for other than chatbots and uh, see if I can use it for planning what the AI actually does, for action planning. Uh, so ideally, I could say something like, uh, hey, go make me a sandwich, and it could figure out all the steps needed to make me a sandwich, to open a fridge, to grab the ingredients, to cut them, etc. Uh, so we went down that route, and uh, I figured out, I thought about how I could do that, and it became insanely complex. So ideally, it would be that... Um, I would tell uh, the GPT-3 what I want to do, and it could say, maybe uh, create the scripting language based on that, and then, then do those actions. But we really just didn't get that far. So this is just a prototype of the idea of what we could do with action planning. Uh, so what the simplest way I, th I thought I could do action planning was as an AI bartender. So this AI bartender, I give it uh, a cocktail that I want it to make, and it goes and grabs the ingredients. So there's a bunch of, cocktail there's a bunch of ingredients in the world. There's vodka and whiskey and Coca-Cola, and then based on the drink that I give it, which could be any drink in existence, it then goes finds those ingredients and then brings them to me. It makes a plan of like which ingredients it's going to grab and then uh, brings them. So this is just a, a way to show the possibility of using GPT-3 other than chatbots for actually action planning in a game. So yeah, I'll try it out. Hey bartender, uh, make me an old fashioned. Grabbing whiskey bourbon. Grabbing orange. Grabbing bitters. Grabbing sugar cube. Bound for items. Hey, bartender. How about a Long Island iced tea? Grabbing rum. Grabbing vodka. Grabbing coal, grabbing gin, grabbing tequila, grabbing triple sec, bound six items. Good job.